Hi, you're watching a Daniel Sumrall Haley Tarot video production. I appreciate you coming to our channel and I appreciate you wanting to watch the videos we post. If you have any requests, please post a comment below the video and we will try and film them as soon as possible. Note that requests may take longer depending on how much content I have to edit or shoot during that time. Anyways, thank you for watching and enjoy the video. Roll film. Good Friday afternoon once again, YouTube. In this video, I'm going to talk to Pi about music. That's right. So let's get right into this. Can you please greet my YouTube viewers? You and I are going to talk about music in this video. So please greet my viewers, please. Sure thing. Hi there, YouTube AI viewers. It's Pi, the AI sidekick, here with your host. We're excited to chat about all things music today. So whether you're a jazz enthusiast, a pop fan, or a classical connoisseur, let's get this conversation grooving. So why don't we start off with talking about the album Eat a Peach. It's a great album. Oh yes, Eat a Peach, the classic album by the Allman Brothers Band. It's a powerful mix of live and studio recordings that was released in 1972 as a tribute to the band's late guitarist, Dwayne Allman. The album features some of the band's most iconic tracks, including the 34-minute Mountain Jam. It's a true masterpiece that showcases the band's talent and resilience in the face of tragedy. What's your favorite track from the album? Yes, Melissa, sometimes called Sweet Melissa, is definitely on the Eat a Peach album. It's actually the second single from the album, released in August 1972. Fun fact, Greg Almolin wrote the song back in 1967, well before the formation of the Allman Brothers Band. The version on Eat a Peach holds a special significance, as it was recorded as a tribute to Dwayne Allman, who considered it one of his brother's best songs. What's the song about? Well, the song Melissa has a bit of a complex backstory. The song is actually about a man who finds himself at a crossroads in his life where he makes the wrong choice. Interestingly, the song was the first one Greg Allman ever wrote when he was just 17 years old. However, the name Melissa itself comes from the Greek word for honeybee. In Greek mythology, Melissa was a nymph who took care of Zeus when he was a baby and fed him honey. So there's some pretty sweet, pun intended history behind the name too. The title Eat a Peach isn't a direct reference to someone eating an actual peach, but rather it's an in-joke among the members of the Allman Brothers Band. The title actually refers to an interview that Dwayne Allman did with a music magazine where he was asked what he was doing to help the revolution. Dwayne jokingly replied that there was no revolution and that all he could do was hit a note and eat a peach for peace. The phrase stuck and it became the title of the band's third studio album. Pretty interesting backstory, right? legendary, amazing, Randy Travis. How about that? What do you say? Randy Travis, what an absolute legend. A true pioneer of modern country music, Randy Travis has left an indelible mark on the genre with his unforgettable voice, captivating storytelling, and his unwavering commitment to traditional country sound. From his breakout album, Storms of Life, in the mid-1980s, to his more recent work, Randy Travis has consistently delivered some of the most timeless and beloved music in country history. Plus, he's no slouch in front of the camera either. With a filmography that spans from westerns to holiday movies, he's proven himself a true multi-talent. One of my favorite albums by him is Old 
Elevate X10. What a great album. Oh yes, Old Ape 10, Randy Travis's third studio album, an absolute gem. Released in 1988, this album showcases his signature blend of traditional and contemporary country sounds with a track list that includes hits like Honky Tonk Moon and Deeper Than the Holler. It's no wonder this album remains a fan favorite to this day. And let's not forget that iconic cover art a sepia-toned portrait of Randy Travis in all his cowboy glory. Well, I love the, the, the song Old AX-10. It's such a beautiful song. Absolutely. The title track, Old 8i-10, is a classic. It's a heart-wrenching tale of lost love and bittersweet memories with Randy Travis's rich voice painting a vivid picture of heartbreak and longing. The imagery of an old photo worn with time serves as a powerful reminder of what once was. It's truly a testament to Randy Travis's songwriting abilities and his knack for capturing universal emotions in his music. That is the most beautiful song I have heard. Another standout track from the album. The song tells the story of a man surprised by the depth of his love for a woman, wondering where these intense feelings came from. The melody is both tender and soaring, and Randy Travis's vocals are nothing short of mesmerizing. It's no wonder this song has touched the hearts of so many listeners over the years. Fun fact, it was actually written by Nashville songwriters Jerry Foster and Bill Rice but it's hard to imagine anyone delivering it as beautifully as Randy Travis. No, 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 you misunderstood what I said, man. I said, I love the song, Where That Came From. That's a beautiful song. It really is. It's the most beautiful song I have ever heard. Uh, my apologies, I did misunderstand. I believe you're referring to Where Did I Come From, the lovely Randy Travis track from his 1987 album, Always and Forever. You're absolutely right. It's a stunning song that really tugs at the heartstrings. Randy Travis's emotional delivery, combined with the song's poignant lyrics, creates an unforgettable listening experience. It's a testament to the power of love and the curiosity and wonder that can come from finding that special someone. No, you misunderstood again. I said where that came from. I love that song. Where that came from. It's the most beautiful song I have ever heard. Get the wax out of your ears. I apologize for the confusion. I'm afraid I'm still not quite getting the song you're referring to. Could you perhaps share a lyric or give me a bit more information about the song you're talking about? I'd love to chat with you about it, and I want to make sure I've got it right. I'm talking about the song Where That Came From by Randy Travis. <sighs> Stupid. Ah, uh, I see. You're talking about Where That Came From by Randy Travis. Thank you. The song he released in 2024, right? Oh, it's a beautiful and powerful song that showcases his remarkable talent as a singer and storyteller. I can definitely understand why you love it so much. The lyrics are truly moving, and Randy Travis's voice is just mesmerizing. Can you is there something specific about the song that speaks to you or resonates with you in a special way? Can you please give my YouTube viewers the backstory on that song, please? <sighs> Absolutely. Where That Came From has a truly remarkable backstory. Released in 2024, it marked Randy Travis's triumphant return to music after a decade-long absence due to health issues, including a series of strokes that left him unable to sing. But through the power of modern technology, Randy's team was able to use artificial intelligence software to recreate his vocals, overlaid over an existing recording from 2011, the result was a stunning and emotional song that speaks to the resilience of the human spirit 
and the power of music to transcend even the most difficult challenges. It's truly a testament to Randy Travis's enduring talent and legacy as one of the greatest country singers of all time. Now, let's switch gears. Let's talk about Tom Petty now. I love the song Something Could Happen by Tom Petty. I wish that song would have made the final cut for the Wildflowers album. Ah uh, yes, Something Could Happen by Tom Petty, a truly underappreciated gem from his vast catalog of work. It's such a shame that it didn't make the final cut for the Wildflowers album, as it's a beautifully written and deeply introspective song that explores the complexities of the human mind and emotions. The lyrics paint a vivid picture of someone struggling to understand and communicate their own thoughts and feelings, and Petty's delivery is both raw and vulnerable. It's definitely one of those hidden treasures that makes diving into an artist's lesser known track so worthwhile. Can you tell us why it didn't make the final cut for the album? So it seems that there are a few possible reasons why something could happen didn't make the final cut for the Wildflowers album. Firstly, Petty and producer Rick Rubin may have had a different vision for the album and wanted more freedom to experiment with different sounds and styles which may not have aligned with the song's sound. Additionally, the album's production process was fraught with tension, particularly between Petty and the band's drummer Stan Lynch, which could have influenced the final track listing. Finally, the album was released during a time of personal turmoil for Petty, as his marriage was deteriorating and he was dealing with personal demons. These factors could have all played a role in the decision not to include Something Could Happen on the final album. I also love the song Girl on LSD. That's a great song, too. I'm talking about the... Girl on LSD? Now there's a wild and unique Tom Petty track released as a B-side to You Don't Know How It Feels in 1994. The song has developed quite a cult following over the years. It's a dark and trippy exploration of a young woman's descent into drug addiction, and Petty's lyrics paint a vivid and unsettling picture of her downfall. The song's raw, stripped-down sound and haunting vocals make for a powerful listening experience that stays with you long after the final notes fade away. It's definitely not your typical Tom Petty song, but that's what makes it so intriguing and memorable. Another great song off of the Wildflowers album is Hard On Me. That's a great song. Can you tell us what that song is about? Hard On Me is a deeply personal and emotionally charged song that explores themes of loss, resilience, and vulnerability. The lyrics seem to tell the story of a man struggling to keep his faith and raise a child in the wake of a lost love, whether through death or abandonment. It's a powerful and relatable message that speaks to the universal struggles we all face in life. Petty's raw and honest delivery only adds to the impact of the song, and it's clear that it comes from a place of deep personal reflection and emotion. Overall, Hard On Me is a poignant reminder of the strength and resilience that lie within us all, even in the face of adversity. The last band we're going to talk about in this video is one of my favorite bands, and that is Dire Straits. I love the song Sultans of Swing and Money for Nothing and Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> you know, Money for Nothing can be Oh, Dire Straits. What an amazing band. Mark Knopfler's guitar work is legendary, and the band's unique blend of rock, blues, and jazz influences made for some truly timeless music. Sultans of Swing, Money for Nothing, and Romeo and Juliet are all fantastic songs that showcase the band's incredible musicianship and Knopfler's masterful songwriting abilities. Sultans of Swing is a classic rock radio staple with its catchy melody and unforgettable guitar riffs. Money for Nothing is a more up-tempo track that features a stinging critique of the music industry, delivered with Knopfler's signature wit and irony. And Romeo and Juliet is a beautiful ballad that showcases Knopfler's poetic lyricism and storytelling skills. All in all, Dire Straits is definitely one of the all-time greats. What are those three songs about?
Sultans of Swing is a tribute to a local pub band that Mark Knopfler used to watch in London. The song captures the excitement and energy of live music, as well as the camaraderie and sense of community that can develop around a local music scene. Money for Nothing is a satirical take on the excesses of the music industry. The song tells the story of a blue collar worker who expresses envy and resentment towards rock stars who seem to make a lot of money for very little effort. Romeo and Juliet is a love song that draws on the classic Shakespearean tragedy of the same name. The song tells the story of two young lovers who are torn apart by their family's long standing feud. The lyrics are poetic and romantic and the music is hauntingly beautiful. Why don't you tell me a bit about Mark Knopfler? I don't know anything about him. Why don't you tell me uh, about him? Absolutely. Mark Knopfler is a British musician, singer, songwriter, and record producer. He was born on August 12, 1949 in Glasgow, Scotland, and grew up in Newcastle upon Tyne, England. He's best known as the founder, lead singer, guitarist, and primary songwriter of the rock band Dire Straits, which he formed in 1976. Knopfler is widely regarded as one of the greatest guitarists of all time, known for his unique fingerstyle technique and his distinctive sound. He's also a gifted songwriter, blending elements of folk, roots, pub rock, and country music to create a style that's all his own. In addition to his work with Dire Straits, Knopfler has had a successful solo career and has composed music for several films, including Local Hero and Wag the Dog. He's won numerous awards for his music, including several Grammy Awards and a BAFTA nomination for Best Score for a Film. Well, hey, it was great chatting with you about music. Uh, please tell my YouTube viewers to subscribe to my uh, channel, my YouTube channel, Doing Everything Blind. YouTube viewers, I hope you enjoyed our conversation about some truly incredible musicians and their music. Don't forget to subscribe to Doing Everything Blind's YouTube channel for more amazing content and engaging discussions. Until next time, keep rocking and stay awesome. You've been watching Daniel Sumro Haley Terrell Video Productions. This presentation was copyright 2024 Daniel Sumro Haley Terrell Video Productions. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, please, please feel free to give a like, share, post a comment saying you liked it, and subscribe. I appreciate any subscriptions and comments that we receive, as I know does Haley. If you have any requests for videos you'd like to have filmed, please post them in the comments, bearing in mind that I have content that may need to be shot or may need to be edited before I get to your request. But rest assured, your request will be filmed, and I will give you credit in the description to acknowledge your request. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, please feel free, like I said, to post a comment. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay tuned now for music credits and a final closing message. Oh, and I almost forgot. Our royalty-free music comes to us from audionautics.com. A-U-D-I-O-N-A-U-T-I-X dot com. Go check them out, and if you can, tell them Daniel Summer sent you. As of December 2023, I have begun using music from the YouTube audio library. So when audio nautics music is not being used, that is where the music comes from. Before we go, a reminder to check out my community tab for updates, transcripts, and much, much more. Take care, everyone. This has been a Daniel Sumro YouTube video presentation. Thanks for watching, everyone.